In Blue Echoes, you can observe two techniques that reflect the title. The numerous accidentals contribute to the blues sound that you'll recognize when listening to this piece. The melody that alternates between the right and the left hand supplies the echo. Blue Echo shifts between F sharp and F natural between what you'd call the D major and the D minor position. This is a characteristic of blues. When you take a third and you lower it, that's a, a, a typical blues characteristic. But basically you stay in D major or minor position with the harmonic fourth at the end of that bar. You do it again with a different harmonic fourth at the end of that line. Line three you have a new accidental, an A flat. So your hand, which started out in this position, is going to have to flat that note to play this line. So on line three, it's going to look like this. And then you go back to your original position, which is D major or minor, depending. So your right hand's pretty simple. You're here, we're here. Line three, you're here. And then line four, you're here, or here. You might just want to block that out. So your hand kind of knows where to go before it's time to go there. In the left hand, you're playing an accompaniment of intervals and then the, the blue echo. So let's start just looking at the echo part. It starts on D. So now you're going to notice that I'm not actually in D major or minor position. I'm in a G configuration. My thumb is on D and my lowest note is G. And inside of that, I have a B flat. So my basic position for the left hand is G minor. My basic position for the right hand is D major or minor. So as you can see that the pieces we're learning are getting a little more complicated. They move in and out of various positions. So let's look at the echo part. Down a step, down a third, down a step, up a step, up a fourth, down a step. I won't want to do that until I'm comfortable a step, down a third, down a step, up a step, up a fourth, down a step. The next echo is on the next line and I'm in the same basic position except I have now a B flat. So down a third, down two steps, up a step, up a third, and up a step, or a second. So here's the first line, here's the second line. Line three, I have a new accidental. I see that I start on A with my fourth finger in bar 9, but in bar 10 I have to go to A flat. Remember in the right hand in that same line I also had to go to A flat. Remember when I did that? So here's how bar 9 is going to look. Up a third, up a step, down a step. Here's my A flat. i got to reach for that big third and then a step. Do that again. And that's when my right hand went also to A flat. Because as you may recall, this piece is called Blue Echoes.
So the two parts are echoing one another. All right, the last bit of the tune in the left hand is exactly like, I bet you can find the line that this is exactly like. Take a second to look for it. It's exactly like line two. So the only thing we haven't looked at with the left hand are these chords, these accompaniment chords. I start out with D, and then I notice in bar two I have a common tone, and I'm playing a second before I go to the melody. And then I do it again, D, but this time it's a third, a minor in the G minor position. And that's all I've got. Everything else is a repetition. So, here goes. One, two, three, four. advise you to take one phrase at a time in your practicing that's one phrase make sure you can get to the left hand chords on time you can also try adding some dynamics the dynamics really contribute to the bluesy feel All right, this piece also has a play along. Let's see how that sounds. It's very slow. One, two, ready, go. kind of funky. I like this piece a little faster. 